Hello everyone and welcome back to What After Dinner History. First of all, wishing you all a very happy new year and we hope that this year will bring abundant joy, happiness and success to one and all. Now today's video focus on periodontology after BDS and to discuss this we have with us Dr. Krishnaraj Ganesh Narayan, founder and consultant at Delta Dental Care. He is a renowned periodontist with the highest qualifications in dentistry with BDS, MDS and PhD from the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, USA. His core strengths include implementation of SOPs, quality assurance, safety and infection control, clinical audits and accreditations in a corporate se setup. He is also an author of several peer-reviewed international publications, researcher, keynote speaker, and reviewer of several international medical journals. So let's hear what he has to say about the field of periodontology after BDS. Hello, sir. Welcome you to our channel, What After Dentistry, to talk about the scope and opportunities in the field of periodontics after BDS. So welcome you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shirin. Thank you for having me and inviting me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. So, sir, please guide our audience in terms of how can they best utilize their education years while they are pursuing periodontics after BTS. See, um, usually period is not the first uh, choice of subject for people. Most times people uh, prefer an ortho or a prosto or an endo and then nothing is available and perio they take it. There are very few people uh, who take perio by choice. Yet uh, the success of every aspect of dentistry whether you look at orthodontics or you look at uh, prosto or endo, depends on the perio, right? So the perio of the perio is not good. None of the other treatments work, but people always prefer something else. But naturally, because the bread and butter of dentistry uh, is prosto, endo, and uh, ortho, right? So that's where the uh, main thing comes from. So perio is by far neglected by most people. But the reality is that uh, every person at some point or other in their life has suffered from periodontal disease, hasn't it? Whether it's gingivitis or periodontitis. In fact, if you look at Guinness Book of World Records, it says uh, period gingivitis is more common than common cold. Correct. So it's probably one of the most common diseases. Yet, uh, people, so the reason why that uh, happens is uh, there's lack of awareness among the people. And the awareness is usually because there's, uh, you know, uh, when people have pain, uh, they can't, they immediately visit a dentist. So gingivitis or perio usually has less pain. Now, having said that, it's a responsibility of periodontite, periodontists across the country and the young students that when they enter this field of perio, they have to understand that uh, it's it's uh, not just treating the disease. Um, you have to make the patient understand and counsel. And that takes up more time than your actual treatment. Correct. So uh, if you want to be successful in, uh, as a, a practitioner in, in periodontics, as a periodontist, uh, you need to spend a lot of quality time with the patients in counseling. Uh, it's as important as your clinical skills. So that's my one point of advice for uh, the postgraduates or the people who are looking at perio as an So once they, I mean, uh, so you're, to answer your question on, um, you know, what advice would you give for people is always look at, so always look at perio as, um, uh, you know, periodontists make the best diagnosticians and I'm so, no offense to oral medicine guys. But as far as diagnosis and treatment planning, including the sequencing of treatment planning is concerned, I feel that the periodontists are the best persons to, best people to lay the foundation uh, for a successful comprehensive treatment plan. So when you look at perio, uh, don't look at it just as gingivitis or periodontitis. Uh, try to understand the entire story in the bigger picture and help the patient uh, make an informed decision on the different types of treatments that are required, which would start with perio and end with an ortho or end with a, um, a prosthetic option. Uh, so understanding of the disease, understanding of the end outcomes, understanding of um, uh, the, the uh, vision of what the patient's dentition would look like in future, you know, 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, uh, will enable uh, the dentist, the periodontist, 
to make the right decision on what should be the treatment for the patient. So keep that in mind and not just the periodontal disease. I think that's that's a good piece of advice and to amalgamate, you know, the learnings from the other fields also and then provide with a treatment plan which has all of those other aspects also. Yes, correct. So, sir, uh, generally many times people, uh, you know, fresh graduates, you know, after practicing to say two, three years after they are out from their dental college, they, they would want to pursue, say, a fellowship program. So, if you could guide our audience in terms of what is the difference between pursuing a fellowship program in periodontology and uh, MDS in periodontology? Okay, so a good question, actually. As far as I know, fellowship programs are not available in India. Fellowship programs are usually uh, done by universities abroad and they are for foreign trained dentists. So basically fellowship programs are designed for foreign trained dentists by universities either in Europe or in the US. Um, but uh, we have to understand that this is only an observational uh, program. It's not an actual clinical program where uh, you can work on patients. So if you want to understand the didactics of periodontology, you, you know, want to understand, uh, learn the periodontology as a subject, um, assist people, uh, the other uh, dentists or assist somebody in uh, diagnosis and treatment planning, then this would be an option for you. But it does not qualify you as a periodontist. So periodontist, dentistry is at the end of the day, yeah, clinical. Eh, no? So you have to work on patients, you have to do your surgeries, you have to do your um, perio stuff. So Unless and until you are actually working on a patient, you cannot call yourself a periodontist. So fellowship programs, which are a, a thing abroad, is, is only uh, to give a flavor of periodontist. It's nothing, it doesn't uh, equal you to a periodontist. So MDS is a, a structured uh, three-year program. So you look at a graduate program in periodontology abroad, or you look at MDS programs in India, uh, they, they are structured programs which have both didactic and clinical experience. Um, doing an MDS is definitely much better uh, or doing a graduate program in periodontology is much better than doing a fellowship program if you really want to practice periodontology. If you only are interested in academics and you want to uh, just teach, then fellowship could be an option. Um, but again, you know, getting a faculty position abroad uh, for a foreign trained dentist with just a fellowship program, your scope will definitely be lesser. So the idea is more to suit the universities abroad who try to, you know, they can make some uh, good money out of uh, 60000 $70,000 as fees to uh, offer this fellowship program. Rather, that money is better spent by doing an MDS in India, or if you're interested, then do a DDS and a graduate program in period abroad if you are to practice period. So that would be my suggestion to students. Correct. Correct. And so, like we've seen how pandemic has changed the education, you know, for, for a period of two years, there were no practical mm -hmm. that were given to the students. So for such kind of, uh, you know, for these students, uh, what do you advise in terms of how can they keep a mark in practicing dentistry going forward? Okay, so this is a, uh, this is a question which is not just for Perio, right? It could be for anybody. Yes. The pandemic affected all the fields, uh, right? And uh, in fact, last uh, last couple of years when I went as a uh, PG examiner, um, we always were, uh, you know, no patients. We, we, they were people suturing on chicken, Macintosh and models and that was all that was a uh, period exam. So it is sad actually. It is a sad, uh, it was a sad scenario these two days because the students never had that much clinical exposure to patients. Um, whether it is perio, endo, ortho, or whichever field of dentistry, the, the, the pandemic affected everyone in terms of, especially the students in terms of um, getting their clinical exposure. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest spend another six months or another year either in the same organization that you were, and you can respect, uh, I mean, I request uh, your principals and management. Uh, to allow some more time for you to uh, go back to your institutes and just perform surgeries. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you can join a lot of these um, uh, charity organizations where uh, they, you know, perform free dental treatments for the underprivileged sections. So there is also a good opportunity to volunteer your services. Um, for me, I feel a postgraduate should, in Perio, at least should have at least performed some 50, 60 surgeries. You know, during our days, we used to perform 300 surgeries before we uh, gave our exam. 
uh, the patients were more, the colleges were lesser, so it was different. But even today, at least 50 to 60 surgeries, if you don't do, you have not seen the different type of mm, uh, periodontal conditions. Second is uh, you have not had the experience to assess the outcome of different patients with the same type of disease process. So some patients may show long-term good success, some patients may show recurrence of disease. You will make a made mistakes in some patients, you would have done your different treatment, you would assess this. So you need sufficient clinical exposure. So uh, either uh, get it in the college that you studied, go back and do some six month or one year program, uh, or uh, work in a volunteer organization or very do charitable work where you can treat some more patients. That would be my advice for whether it is endo, whether it is prosto or periodical. I think that's a really good piece of advice. So all you audience follow what sir has been saying and try to do some volunteering work or go back to your institutions and uh, try to get the clinical exposure that you that you desire of. Yeah. So sir. And, and, and I'll tell you the reason why also is, see, if most people, they, they don't want to go back and do this because exactly. they have done their BDS, they have done their MDS. Now they feel it's a time to earn. Mm. So whether they, go, they want to go as a consultant or they want to work as a full-time in some clinic, so what happens there is a person who is paying you a salary is going to expect you to perform from day one. Yes. You cannot go to that clinic where you are expecting to get paid and then start learning there. Mm -hmm. It may work the first month, the second month, uh, you, your job will not be there. You know? So, uh, so many periodontists, so many specialists are there and the choices are many. So you have to be on top of your game. Uh, for that, this is very, very crucial. Yes, sir. correct. Absolutely. And I think it's very important what I have, you know, we have seen uh, over the years that uh, people are losing out their patients. So it's very important to be patient when you when you want to work as a clinician in, in the in the industry. Yes, correct. So, sir, are there any other uh, super specializations or ramifications within the field of uh, periodontics? See, there are so many technological advances that have occurred, right? Uh, and Perio is no exception. Uh, we have phenomenal uh, new things like, uh, you know, uh, lasers. Lasers are an integral part of periodontal treatments. You know, earlier when we studied, there was no laser even in the curriculum. Uh, and I was one of the last people to get onto this laser bandwagon because I always thought it is like a, a you know, a tool to make money, you know, to... Uh, magic wand will came. But the reality is, once you start using the laser, you understand the concept behind it and use it properly, you get phenomenal results. So uh, lasers you have, is something that I, I strongly urge on the um, perio, even BDS doctors, to learn lasers. This is really nice. And um, uh, see, those, those days, uh, even for doing periodontal uh, procedures, we had to uh, manually open all the surgical sites. Now with LANAPS and uh, minimally invasive periodontal surgeries, you have so many um, uh, better out treatment outcomes that you generate in a minimally invasive form, such as a laser. So using laser, number one, is something that people should realize. Number two is de uh, dental implants. See. Uh, what happens is uh, there are many people practicing dental implants and there are the patients also have a lot of choices when they go to the dentist and a lot of dental companies, dental, dental, dental implants are available. So if you are not adept at placing dental implants, you are not adept at restoring dental implants, then uh, you have not done enough justice to this profession or to your patients. So, and unfortunately today, dental implants are not taught as a per particular specialty either for BDS or for MDS. So this is either you have to um, uh, learn some more within your MDS program or attend many courses that are available uh, to do a proper fellowship program in uh, implantology. And I have also seen a lot of doctors who just place the implants and then rely on a prosthodontist to come and restore these implants. So even for those people who are placing the implants, please, 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 uh, I request you, uh, take the time out, uh, six months or whatever time it takes or part-time, but learn the prosthetics of dental implants because ultimately the purpose of a dental implant is to restore the tooth. So if you have to learn the subject, learn it from uh, beginning to end. Learn the placement and the prosthetics. So lasers, dental implants, even practice measure. Many, many people uh, you know, want to start a practice. They know dentistry, but they don't know how to run the clinic. So management, how to manage a practice, how to run a successful business, to learn uh, the nitty gritties of business and administration is extremely critical, uh, which is not taught in dental. Uh, so focus your time on learning uh, some of these uh, 
uh, administrative skills also that will be important when you want to start your own practice. Correct, correct, absolutely correct, sir. And sir, we see we know that you've also gained a PhD in oral biology. So, if you could just throw some light on this subject, if somebody wants to pursue, because there are master courses available in oral biology after BDS. Uh, so, if someone wants to pursue this course, just a little bit information on what this course is all about and how can it help them to work in this field. Uh, see, from for me, I was always interested in research, uh, and I for me, research has, has always been my first love. Um, and research isn't anything, right? It, it can be research can be in how to do a successful dental practice, how to benefit your patients, how to be successful in your marriage or in parenting. So everything requires a good research. Right? Research is uh, having a research bent of mind. Uh, helps you analyze any problem that you face in life and uh, try to think of different uh, reasons why a particular problem comes and try to devise many strategies on how you can address the particular problem and prevent them from coming in the future. So the same thing is applicable for dentistry or for any other field of life. Okay. Now, okay. when you do a research program, for me, uh, I, I did my PhD in oral biology because I was very interested in uh, perio and uh, I wanted I, for some reason I was getting aggressive periodontitis cases a lot and I wanted to do my research in that field and the best people uh, who I who I found at that particular time were working on A was the Rutgers University in um, uh, uh, US so when I applied uh, to Rutgers University uh, uh, somehow by God's grace and for other things I got in through and we were only uh, two uh, candidates in the whole world uh, they got selected for that pro program and for it was a fully funded scholarship. Um, you know, so usually PhDs are fully funded. So the fees are about $40,000, $50,000 a year, which is paid for by the university. Also, the lab uh, pays a stipend, uh, which includes your health insurance and your, so uh, your stays can be taken care of for the entire program of three or four or five years, depending on how long you want to do uh, your PhD takes. Now, the PhD program in the US is very different from the ones that are in Europe and other parts of the world. I somehow feel that the PhD program in the US is much better structured because they have a two-year didactic program where you have to complete about 40 credits um, by taking different different courses and you have a choice of these courses. You also get to do lab rotations, which means that you can actually work in different different labs and get an experience of different techniques, different areas. You can do microbiology, you can do biotechnology, you can do uh, molecular biology, you can do genetics. So, and then you can choose your, your to do your PhD in any one of those labs where you feel there is a lot of interest that you have and at the same time it will solve the problem that, uh, the, that that's good so um, uh, once you complete your phd of course then it's a completely different ball game right so you have to again get back to your postdoc positions and then uh, write, start writing grants and then uh, look into getting a, a, a faculty position um, or you can get into the industry um, and many, many options uh, are available. So uh, even in India now, people are realizing that PhD is, uh, is a great way, is a great career opportunity, not just earlier though it was only MDS, but now PhD, you can do a lot more with PhD. And at the end, you can have your own lab. You can affiliate yourself to many universities, private labs, and you can write your own funds. Department of Biotechnology gives you a lot of grants nowadays that you can use that and you can uh, pay yourself a salary and uh, uh, do good research. And there's no limit to the number of grants that you can write. And you can write 10 grants and get funded for five or six and you can easily make more than what a, uh, a practitioner would, would make. So it's a good opportunity. Yes, for sure. Okay. I think that's really, that's really nice, sir. So, sir, uh, we're coming to the last part of our session today on Perio. Um, what is the that last tip or advice that you would like to give to the dental graduates that they should follow? Okay. Um, now, if you want to be a clinical practitioner, uh, keep practicing the art. Right? So never stop. Never stop practicing Perio. There may be some times where you may not get enough Perio cases and you will wait for the time when you get Perio cases in your clinic. Devise methods, even make it free treatments also, but never lose your clinical touch of period, right? Uh, and it happen, It is uh, applicable for any field, even Sachin Tendulkar or uh, Kobe Bryant. You see anybody who has been successful in their field has always been practicing very hard their art. Try to keep learning abreast of the latest technologies 
keep working hard on your skills and improve uh, the quality of care, both in terms of clinical service and your diagnostic and uh, prognostic ability. These two things will make you a successful dentist and you will create a brand around yourself. That's very important for success. That's that's a very, very good take-home message that the audience should definitely follow uh, You know, if they are watching this session today. So thank you so much, sir, for coming on our channel and talking about the field of periodontology because this is a, this is a very requested video that we have got from many of our you know audience that we want to know more about this field and how we can excel in this field so thank you very much for coming on our channel and talking about it always a pleasure thank you so much again thank you so all you audience i hope this session was inspirational it was it gave you all the take home messages and pointers very good points that sir has take, given on how to excel in this field so thank you very much for patiently listening us to, uh, to us today. And I will see you in the next video. Before that, please subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. Like and share this because this might help out somebody who's, who wants to get into this field of periodontology after BDS. So thank you once again. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye and good luck.